climb upon my faithful steed Then we gonna ride, gonna smoke some weed Climb upon my big ass steed And ride, ride, ride Ladies and gentlemen, this is my, mostly gentlemen this is my last video for 2008, and I've been really uninspired these last few weeks. I haven't wanted to make any videos. So, in order to inspire myself, maybe for the oncoming year, I figured I'd uh, just read some random page, or a few random pages, from my favorite book of all time for about ten minutes. So, um, I hope you enjoy. You probably won't because you won't understand what the fuck is going on. But I'm going to read it anyway. Here we go. Axa blushed and refused to meet her eyes. I don't know. I don't know what the king does. It is the highest point in the city. It must be a great honor, she repeated. Andromash had caught a look of dismay on her maid's face, and she put her arms round her and hugged her close. I have a head for heights, she reassured the woman. Don't worry. They entered the huge square tower at its base, and inside the Skaeon Gate. The stone wall was very thick, and inside the tower was cold and damp. Andromash saw a narrow flight of stone stairs spiraling up into the darkness. She looked up and saw the tower was merely a dank square shaft of empty air, illuminated at intervals by holes punched through the thickness of the walls. The stairs hugged the inside of the walls in a series of tubes, I mean sharp inclines, followed by horizontal walkways to the next rise until they reached a tiny square of light high above. There was no hand tr handrail. The torches flickered in wall brackets, and one of the soldiers lit a brand to carry up the steps. Do you wish me to come with you, my lady? Andromash saw Axe's eyes were huge and frightened in the torchlight, her hand straying unconsciously to her swollen belly. No, stay here. Wait for me, Andromash replied. Do you want the water? Axa started to unsling the water skin she held on her hip. Andromash stopped for a moment, then told her, No, keep it. I might want it later. She realized the two soldiers were preparing to escort her up. She held out her hand. Give me the torch, she demanded. The torch carrier, unsure, casting an eye at his fellow, passed the brand to her. Stay here, she told him curtly, and before they could move, she set off swiftly up the stairs, stepping lightly on the shiny stone. On and up she climbed, her legs strengthened by her many hours of walking or running on Thera, pushing her up the steep flights. The steps were each nearly knee-high, and she felt her body enjoying the exercise, her thighs and calves thrilling to be worked so hard. She never, that's what she said, she never suffered from sickness, sparked by heights. But she was not tempted to look down to see how far she had climbed. She looked up instead towards a small square of light. She felt she had the measure of the old king now. He had asked her to the tower to daunt her, perhaps to humiliate her, hoping she would collapse in tears at the foot of the tower and have to be carried up like a child. She was amazed th that a king with such power, such riches, should feel the need to prove his superiority over a young woman. Petty bullies I can deal with, she thought. The steps became narrower as she neared the top, and they seemed much more worn here and slick with damp. She became conscious of the dark abyss to her right, and she placed her feet more carefully as she climbed. She wondered why the stairs would be most worn at the top of the tower. Then she realized and laughed. She stopped and held her torch high. Thirty or so steps below on the other side of the tower was a dark recess. In it there was a narrow door. She had not seen it as she passed. It must be a door leading to the battlements of the south wall. The old man would have come that way, leaving her to climb the full height of the tower. Priam, she thought already, I do not like you. When she emerged at the top, it was with a sense of relief. The brightness of the low sun hurt her eyes, and the wind buffeted her hair, and for a moment she was disoriented. She looked around, slowly studying her breathing. The wooden roof was half the size of the king's megaron, yet empty bar four guards, one at each corner of the tower, motionless, staring forward. A tall, wide-shouldered man was standing on the battlements of the southwest wall. 
the wind blowing through his long silver gold hair. How can someone have silver whatever? He was powerfully built and deeply tanned. He wore a blue full length tunic, and despite the coolness of dawn, his tanned muscular arms were bare. I feel like I'm reading like some gay magazine. He was in the profile to her, and she saw a high beaked nose and strong jaw. He didn't appear to have seen her, and she stood uncertain. Well, are you going to stand there all day, girl? he said, not turning. Andromash walked over to him and stood, head bowed. I am Andromash of Thebes. The king turned suddenly. She was surprised at how young and vital he was. His height and, and the width of his shoulders dominated her, and his physical presence was colossal. Have you not been taught how to address your king, girl, on your knees? Oh boy, I wonder where this is going. He loomed over her, and she was almost forced to her knees by his presence alone. Instead, she straightened her back. In Thebes under Placos, we do not bow the knee to anyone, not even the gods. Priam leaned in close so she could see the yellowish whites of his eyes and smell the morning wine on his breath. He said quietly, You are not in little Thebes now. I will not tell you again. At, that, at the moment, there were clattering on the staircase of the royal fucking... At that moment, there was a clattering on the staircase, and a royal eagle climbed onto the roof. His helmet bore the black and white crest of a captain. He strode quickly to the king. Lord! He glanced at Andromash and hesitated. Priam gestured impatiently for him to go on. Lord, we have him! Someone must have warned him, for he had almost made it to the Egyptian ship. He is being questioned now. Excellent! I shall attend the questioning later. The king was once more looking down at the bay. Is that monstrosity Helicaon's new ship? Yes, sir, the Xanthos. It arrived late last night. Andromash's interest quickened. She watched Priam closely, but could not see from his expression whether he considered it good news or bad. After a moment, he dismissed the captain and turned regard to Andromash again. Let me show you my city, he said, then sprang lightly onto the high battlement wall before turning and holding out his hand to Andromash. You know what? Reading out loud is too boring and hard and I don't like it. So, I'll see you guys in 2009. Hopefully that inspired me. I don't feel inspired, but we'll see. 2008 was awesome. When she had asked, ask Axa, I fucked it up already. <laughs>